Poland. Yeah. Usually we call, uh, everywhere else is like subdominant with extra six, like in Poland we call it the Schopenhauer here, you see. Schopen, Schopen usually introduces the into some very important moment here. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and now that we have some modulations. Based on Adam Mickiewicz poetry, this time on the poem which 
<laughs> you will not try to repeat in Polish, call it like Świta Ziemka, yeah? Like it's like, it's like in English, in translation, uh, like in Ondin, yeah? It's about like very fascinating story, like about, and actually like many like musicologists made like a comparison of the rhythm of the verse, uh, of, of the poem, and, and, and the rhythmic structure of, uh, uh, of, of Chopin's music, like, and it's actually very common, yeah? And it, it's actually like very connected connected like uh, in sense of theory and, and also in the structure of both uh, uh, masterpieces. So uh, so the story is like that, like that <laughs> there is beautiful lake called like Świte, that is why Świte Janka, right? And uh, a beautiful uh, man meets the uh, wa water uh, nymph, yeah? which, which is called like Ondin. Like, they, uh, they fell in love and uh, he proposes to her and he, he got, he's accepted and uh, everything looks beautiful. Yeah, it's like in his beginning when we have, have this beautiful rondo in, uh, in A, uh, A flat major, like, like with the first film. And suddenly, like, like this water nymph decides he would like to check him. He wants to try him. Yeah, he's really uh, he fell in love with her. So of course, because she's, she's a ma magical person, she's uh, she's trans she's transforming into a completely different girl, yeah, and tries to flirt with him and tease with him, yeah, and he starts teasing with uh, this girl, uh, not knowing that this is the, 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 the water nymph, yeah, and later they are uh, they together, everything suddenly in, in the C sharp minor section, yeah, very dramatic, she stands out and showing her who she really is, yeah. yeah. And she says that he has to be, he has to be penalty for because he cannot be like like that. Yeah, like. So, so she will, so he will take his life and they will spend together in the lake forever. Yeah. yeah so it's like la, 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 like that. So this is like very, this fantastic story. Like and this music is really, really, really very beautifully connected to this. Well, when we analyze all the skis, especially the C sharp minor section. Yeah, and, and later the coda, coda very dramatic, uh, which is like, is, uh, is of, of course like one of uh, version of interpretation, whenever, but it's always very good one to, to find very good way of in, in, in imagination to interpret any music and Chopin in particular. And this kind of narrative music as ballad, ballad is, 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 very, is very important. Okay, so uh, now like, uh, we talk about Zulkas, we talk about ballads, Maybe uh, come back a little bit to the to the another national dance, probably the most most important in Polish uh, culture and, and music of Frederick Chopin, uh, which is Polonaise. Yeah. He composed like many uh, Polonaises throughout his whole life, uh, starting from the the Seattle Polonaises, like ending like for you like uh, deep music like Polonaise Fantasy of sixty one. Like, like, so we have like. We could see like the same in Mazurka, the same in Polonaise. We could see how his life was being changed, yeah, from from from, from very like uh, unstressful, beautiful, yeah, period to to to, to, uh, to time of uh, big sickness and really really something that suffered of him, like uh, so. Uh, but but Polonaise have few very important things in common. Yeah, it doesn't matter if they are small or big and from which period they come. Uh, so I like in comparison using uh, two big Chopin Polonaise, one the Grand Polonaise of 22 of uh, Vanadis Pianato and second one Polonaise in A flat major of 53 Heroic. Yeah? So they are completely uh, two different Polonaise. The first one is like so called is still Brian. It was composed in the first period of Chopin's music uh, before Chopin left uh, Poland, it's like full, full virtuosity. The, it, its main uh, purpose was was to really make uh, piano be as virtuosic as possible. Yeah, but this is uh, but this is like development of still beyond of his predecessors, like like Hummel, for example. Yeah, uh, but this is the different level of virtuosity, different level of musicianship. Yeah, so. Uh, so it's like uh, Chopin debuted with this piece. It was the first pianist uh, who, uh, who performed this piece, like uh, just before, just before his leaving Poland in 1830, like in, in National Theatre in Warsaw. Yeah, 
Yeah, of, of course, like uh, this piece was composed originally for piano with orchestra. Maybe do you know who made the transcription for the piano solo? Anybody knows? Nobody, okay, Arthur Rubinstein. Yeah, he, he did especially for, for, for because he, he loved this piece he, and, and he made this uh, revision to, 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 play, to play solo. Uh, okay, so uh, what, uh, and, and the, the one, and the second Polonaise, heroic Polonaise, written in the really end of his life, you know, uh, about very nationalistic, very patriotic uh, characteristic, yeah, for Polish people is probably the most all together, maybe with revolutionary attitude, like they are two of the most important pieces for Polish people, not only for musicians, you know, but uh, if you ask like 90% people walking in the street, they know this piece, yeah, so it's like something like very important, and, and uh, heroic Polonaise is like second and fifth of Poland, yeah, it's like it's so, so important, so famous, like uh, for every, every, every Polish uh, human being, not only, not only pianist. Yeah, the, uh, what, what is very characteristic about all Polonaise? Yeah, yeah so uh, very often are preceded by introduction sections. Yeah, yeah where they have different characters. For example, it's like when we take like uh, Grand Polonaise of 22, like uh, this is like, um, of course, it's different characteristic because it's supposed to play by orchestra. Yeah, yeah and, and, and a little bit different characteristic of voicing, different characteristic of development is like, like making it really tutti and, and, and introducing like big, big theme. Yeah. In heroic Polonaise is like a little bit more precise, also gives to was it, but it's written strictly for the piano solo and, and, you, and we can feel it. Yeah. It's like more, more, uh, the texture is more piano than orchestra, yeah. more concise, like more chromatic, like, like uh, but, but of course it has the, 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 they have the same meaning, they introduce, introduce the main, uh, main theme of Polonaise. And what, what there are few very important uh, things like when, when we perform Polonaise. Yeah. Uh, the first thing is like, like always the first beat uh, is like is always longer than is written. Yeah, it's like like uh, because when we dance the Polonaise, the, it's like first step like that. Yeah, so the, that's why the, the, the first note, the, the first beat is always longer than is written. Uh, that is just written in the score. So it's very important. Uh, to, to, to remember it. Yeah. And po Polonaise as itself, it, it was the danced uh, couple, uh, the dance only by couples uh, in, in aristocratic noble manner. Never village, never rural. It was dance of aristocracy of entire Europe. All, all the kings, like uh, important, important people, like wealthy people, always danced this uh, beautiful piece. Yeah. So, uh, um, so of course, if, if we imagine like like, like, uh, like like with wealthy people, like kings, like uh, military, like with heavy uniforms, with, with long bones, yeah, it cannot be cannot be jumped, yeah, it cannot be it cannot be the ground, yeah, it has to be this uh, very uh, very distinguished, but, yeah, very uh, like uh, noble, uh, like with elegance, yeah, yeah. So uh, so this is, this is what we always should uh, remember. Doesn't matter what kind of colors uh, we are playing. Uh, Polonaises of Chopin are usually phrased within uh, four major structures. Yeah. Four major antecedent and four major consequent. Yeah. So it's like a period of eight, but we should always listen to the ending of the, of, of the last measure of the fourth, of the fourth measure. Yeah. It's very important. Uh, 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 Polonaises of Chopin are not the pieces which could be juxtaposed. Yeah. It's not like the, the last note is just ending and beginning of a new. One has to be finished, the second to start. Yeah, but other, otherwise uh, I call it, uh, uh, this my, my auto uh, like uh, um, Mark, uh, sometimes uh, like over, overlooping, yeah? yeah? Sometimes going like crazy, like going faster, faster, faster without brief, and we are then we are losing the character of the dance. Yeah, that's, why, that's why it's very, very important, yeah. And uh, another thing. Uh, like, like when we have prolongated first beat, yeah. So later we have two sixteen notes, yeah. Which because of prolongation of the first beat, the two sixteen notes has to be have to be like uh, much faster. Of course, like sometimes we call this epic bolero rhythms also, yeah. Something to tan, ta -ta -tan, ta -ta -tan, like which are uh, accelerated. Uh, okay, so 
Can so, you demonstrate a little yeah, bit? Yeah, that's, that's why, yeah. that's why. Yeah. It's the plan. They yeah. won't understand. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, so for example, yeah. Uh, uh, let's start from this. Uh, E-flat uh, major, uh, the grand polonaise, yes? Uh, so w when you go fr directly from the femia, <laughs> Dances uh, and Polonaise in particular, 
is like, like listening to the left hand there. I, Chopin used to say like very beautiful thing that like uh, uh, if the music is a tree, the left hand there are roots and the right hand there are leaves. Yeah, yeah. So, so like if you if you don't have roots, you don't have the construction. Yeah, that the tree will collapse. Yeah. So this is this is so important to do like uh, and when we go here like to uh, let me see like you want to you want to show the role of the left hand in the in the coda here, like I... <laughs> very important but we need to have some basis yes so to to to, to do it like okay so take a drink first yeah maybe <laughs> 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 okay. drink there drink there <laughs> <laughs> okay so if we if we talk about the second polo se se second polonaise is uh, so, uh, about heroic polonaise the, the mainly is uh, many things uh, similar, but you see here was approach was very like virtuosic, like using very sparkling like uh, sparkling uh, kind of articulation, like uh, like very, very jumping fingers, like very very flexible. Like in heroic polonaise is different because it's different music, it's different. We are playing different music. Yeah, no, 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 not like not, nothing like, like, like having scattando, having fun. Now, now it's very very serious. Piece. So even when we, in, in this introduction, yeah, it's very, very serious.
What we have in common, we have visited Mia. This has to be like really like walking, walking like really like, like, like and, and remember the word heroic, yeah? Really heroic, not like jumping, not like not scherzando, not having fun, no not, not this case, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Section like in the, in the middle, like this ostinato figure, like Chopin, Chopin, like uh, decided like to eat it. Really, really, it's not a little bit strange because it's more like virtuosic approach, and this polonaise is not really such virtuosic, like it's more about like tension, about like exploring really dramatic approach. Like, but he decided to make more more virtuosic. He like. <laughs> section and later it becomes very beautiful very beautiful section afterwards <laughs>
like voicing. Yeah, when, when, when usually when playing Chopin, like not only here, like, like but every piece, like Chopin loved improvisation. Yeah, Chopin loved to change. Yeah, Chopin never ne never didn't like when students played something that and and repeated the same motif exactly the same way. So so even if you take this. <laughs> Concertpianist, that is, is like form which was which it wasn't created by Chopin, it was created by Irish composer John Field. Yeah, but, but again, like level of Chopin musicianship, like uh, sophistication of the phrasing, of the texture, of the modulations, yeah, of the, of the of many many beautiful new ideas, making like something which. Uh, no, nobody was heard before his time uh, like in, in this genre. Yeah, for, for, for the last example, I want to, to tell you a little bit like uh, Chopin Nocturne in C minor, Opus 48, number one, probably the one of most difficult, one of most famous. Yeah, so okay, it has three sections. Yeah, we have uh, the first section, and sometimes uh, the, the biggest uh, difficulty, like which I find listening. Uh, especially to young pianists, is like overuse of rubato in the, in opening, yeah. Because because like uh, one of famous professors once said, the I, the the idea of understanding this opening of, of, of this the famous notion is like uh, listening to the uh, rhythm of the walking in the marsh. 
Yeah, so we have to, in fact, sometimes uh, recognize a, a smaller like a funeral actually. We are tracking C minor, of course, to be flat minor, uh, also dra very dramatic, very dark piece, you know, like in music history. Like, yeah, so, so when, when we play the beginning of it, nocturne is important that, again, the role of the left hand to not try to be uh, um, managed too much by, by the beautiful fiorituras of the right hand, but of the like walking steps uh, like in the left hand. So uh, many modulation, but we're going toward one place, to our best C. <laughs> so it's a big, big mistake, like in performing to play with up hills and down hills. Yeah, it's, it's like it's very important because it's considered like very, uh, very late style of Chopin music. Like and, and this nocturne is one of the climax of his composition, compositional output. Yeah. A very mature, yeah. So it's the, the same is like idea of phrasing, idea of construction, yeah. So and in the second section, a beautiful introduction or, or so-called like, like chorale section, very often used in his last period, like in uh, like ballad F minor again in sonatas, like, like in uh, many many different pieces, yeah. His uh, chorale approach, yeah. So.
style of uh, Frédéric Chopin. And with this uh, uh, genre, I'd like to finish uh, to, today lecture. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. It was a pleasure to, to sharing with you, of course, on, on the music of my compatriot, uh, wonderful composer Frédéric Chopin. Thank you so much. Well, um, I'd think you all must agree with me, right? When I say something is good, watching something that you learn, I think you will agree with me that with Dr. Kristen has done what takes, you know, mm -hmm. um, specialist of Chopin's music, and I think today have brought up quite a lot of elements for us here, so, you know, just to know if you have learned something, okay, to share what you think you have learned today, you know, it's always the process of learning something, processing your brain, and then to actually realize what you have learned in a lecture, a lecture recital. I mean, music is universal, it speaks on its own. I mean, of course, he's Polish and you do not expect like our kind of accents or whatsoever, but music in itself speaks for itself, okay? And just by watching his demonstration and his efforts in, you know, producing the different genres for you to see uh, different nuances, Okay, different techniques even, um, and how important form, harmony, your study of theory, you know, your understanding of the period and of the composer's life, all these really matter to bring out the music that you would like to play. Of course, you have to practice and you have to work hard and things like that. So just before we go and have a break, uh, well, for our dinner and uh, to be back for more master class, I would like to hear from the students and our teachers here what you have learned uh, just from the, se the session today. Okay, so may I have some people speaking before we take a break. Okay, let's maybe, maybe Christine can help take the lead. Well, for me, well, it's just, the thing that sticks a lot now is the uh, polyrhythm. But okay. I think it is something that is a, uh, I mean, one thing is technical because it's, uh, you can't get the rhythm right if typically you are not comfortable with the notes, positions, everything. So, yeah, uh, I think more, a lot more of just left hand alone work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's uh, left hand practicing, left hand is important, right? Xavier, Xavier oh. plays some Chopin yeah. right there. I think he's starting to learn the second a lot, that's why I thought, you know, like. Uh, yeah, what I learned was that the different forms of the ballad, especially ballad one, with such an interesting form, as well as the three different like types of mazurka. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, what about Ambling? Oh, one thing I learned that when you have repetition, <coughs> like the parts that are repeated, like motifs that we to play it differently and introduce something new. Yeah, you should play uh, each repetition differently. Oh, maybe yeah, Karen. Yeah, very, very, very important. Yes. Like, when Chopin published works. And later he performed the pieces in uh, into his recitals. He even then changed. Even it was published. Yeah, he played he played differently because for maybe it should be a little bit altered. Yeah, so he loved improvisation each each time. Like, in fact, yeah, you will notice Chopin's music tend to repeat certain things here and there, here and there, and it's very important, yes, to play um, with the variations and, and the differences each time. Well, Karen, what do you want to teach us? So, uh, I think the understanding of form. <laughs> okay, I'm glad to know that. Yeah. And what about the other teacher, uh, Rui? <laughs> uh, Rui had, had a, a masterclass session with Dr. Christian yesterday, but I should have played, played Beethoven. But anyway, what's your um, view on the lecture today? Uh, actually, what my point is, uh, like what they mentioned before, uh, it's interesting that uh, we play the repetitions uh, differently. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then in different dynamic contrast that bring up the color. Like yesterday actually I learned how to paint the Beethoven with more colors and more shapes. Yeah, I think, I um, yes. Um, one of the most important things is about the nuances, yeah. right? 
uh, you can see he can play running passages in one hand, like in the right hand in compository style, but the left hand is really very stable, you know, and uh, bringing out different characteristics in each hand, especially in contrapunto playing. Well, uh, what about Dexter? It came late. <laughs> Yeah, I, <clears throat> I mean, there, there are so many notes out there, but then uh, it occurred to me that um, like uh, what, what was previously, sh previously shared, um, uh, when there are repeats, there are different ways that you play, the different voices that you need to bring out. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I mean, it's important to get the notes right, but you, it's also uh, important to paint the picture, the depict the mood that is required. Yeah, something very interesting was going on throughout this playing. It's actually paddling, huh? Yeah, paddling is so. Honestly, I will tell you, I don't even But paddling is such a technique to bring out Chopin's music. Yeah. You you paddle, you paddle a lot, but you have to change them so well and ma manipulate the paddle so well that everything comes clear and clean, right? And uh, that it itself, you know, because there are so many notes, right? And running passages and all that kind of thing and the big um bulky sections so that paddling is uh well i mean he, he can't talk about it <laughs> but it's one of the very important things that you should have observed in performing the pieces it is possible to play everything there and clearly and not muddle up yeah you know and well su Wei, what do you think uh i learned a lot from the nocturne the opus uh, 48 from the one the C minor nocturne mm -hmm. like he, he mentioned that the left hand is um, like walking mm. like, so in my yeah uh, I think the walking idea is quite yeah. it's yeah, quite fingers, fingers a great make, idea to, yeah to make this of course there is some rubato but this is rubato is weaving this like step yeah so so you can start to not interfere the yeah so the, the this the is a bigger mm. issue yeah yeah because as in walking the steps. You are playing. You are actually walking evenly, right? Yeah. But at the same time, you are playing that rubato. Mm -hmm. That's uh, why this is yeah, the biggest, that's biggest like, part. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> like somewhere else that the rubato in Chopin's Nocturne is actually kind of like a rubber band. There's a tense and loose. It's not, but it's everything is within the. Set, yeah, it's still fixes. Limit. Yeah, because Back. Chopin was really like sensitive about rubato. It has to be like very symmetrical. He he like. One of his fam his famous mottos is like simplicity is the most important in the music. Yeah, so uh, rubato has to be everything symmetrical. Has to be like like compare like singing singing uh, singing of the music of, of the melody. Uh, like if sometimes I, I say to the student that if you are not sure how to do it, try to sing it yourself. Because because you cannot cheat your natural body. Like if, if it's your body part is not, not natural, it means it's wrong. Yeah, 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 so, so. And Try to singing and you will get very simple. Uh, it's okay, you are not. Hmm. And what about you there? Um, yeah. Oh. yeah, come, come. Um, I think what struck me the most is the, the Chopin and Polish spirit. And that um, when you approach piece by Chopin, you have to... Um, the atmosphere, the culture, um, the historical background, all in place, and as well as uh, Chopin's uh, personal life at the point in time, and then when you put it all together, um, you must be bold and courageous in expressing it and, and interpreting it, and that will give that, that color and uh, the Christian show today. Yeah. Well, um, I think uh, very importantly, I think he enjoyed playing on this piano. <laughs> yeah, I can hear it's like oh, having yeah, his soul nice, coming nice, out yeah. because yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very, you know, very comfortable and has beautiful sound. Yes, yeah, right. yeah, you know, he can feel the spirit of the music. I can hear he likes the piano. Okay, and uh, I think oh, you would have felt that what must go back and play some Chopin, right? Do you? So I don't know. I like Oh, I'm going to play more Chopin. <laughs> okay, and uh, there was also Yiflin yesterday who had a master class uh, on Chopin or her Baccarat, which she has already completed with her LT and stuff like that, competition and stuff like that. But how was the experience you can share with us? Like, um, each stage I develop different things in the Baccarat. I mean, over the years, I mean, we've worked on so many things and now it's uh, working on the music and taking note, I mean, taking into consideration the lifestyle of Chopin and you have to differentiate his Polish style and his European style of it. 
it's not just uh, yeah. woman thing. I, I think, think as the strength of our academy, we develop the students over years, you know, from learning the notes and, and all the dini thing. And we progress to more and more um, higher level learning and like we are pleased to have you know professors coming in to give these lectures to enlighten us in terms of higher level learning even for teachers for ourselves who have been learning a lot of things in our lives but because they are especially in a particular subject the knowledge and in-depth approach uh, it is what we need you know looking at just one particular composer the characteristics and how to produce that kind of thing. I mean, you all know like FRSM, you can actually just play one composer, right? If you play one composer, what can you bring out? And today, we actually have him playing one composer and bringing out very, very different elements. And that is what I would like um, all of you to have learned it. I mean, there are some people younger and so on and so forth, but I hope this experience will bring you into Chopin's music and maybe uh, tomorrow onwards you will approach things Okay, we shall not uh, keep people hungry, hungry. Okay, we need to have come out of a plan. It's uh, kind of wet. You know, it feels so much like a... What period of time in Poland is this? I think it's... Uh, now no, no, it's cold. Cold fall, like close to winter. Yeah, yeah but here it's cold today and it's <laughs> rainy and we feel a little bit European. <laughs> okay, uh, so now um, do we have buddy out here? Okay, I don't know, it's still drizzling, rainy or what. Okay, we can open the door now. Um, yeah, I okay, can open the door now and we decide how we want to arrange the food, okay? Y'all help me, right? There's some food behind, some food there, I have some drinks and okay, y'all help me, please. <laughs> okay, and you can take the chairs out to eat. We don't eat inside here, kind of like dirty. So, um, yeah, just draw, okay, I'm going to open. Yeah, yeah, just draw, I can open the door. No, 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 no,